Good evening. Okay, today we will study on the subject called Perpetual Virgin. Perpetual Virgin. Immaculate Conception. Okay? What say the scripture? Mary's perpetual virginity, immaculate conception. And then we will say, what saith the scripture? What does the Bible say about this? We don't want what the church says. We don't want what the Pope says. We don't want what the pastor says, what the preacher says, or a great evangelist says. We want what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. What saith the scripture? What saith the scripture? Now when you say about immaculate conception, it is a Roman Catholic doctrine that teaches uh, that Mary was conceived free from all stain of original sin. That when Mary was born, or uh, when Mary was conceived, she was conceived and she was conceived and she was born Without any stain of original sin, which means she was born with no sin in her. So, so it's, uh, and then, the, which means uh, Mary's mother was sinless, and Mary's grandmother was sinless, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, they bring this uh, dogma called Immaculate Conception. Uh, or perpetu and another thing is the perpetual virginity of Mary. Now that means that she was always virgin, even after the even after Jesus was born, uh, she never had any children. She was virgin, and uh, and that is what. Uh, so basically, what they want to make a doctrine out of it is to exalt Mary to the level of Godhead, so that they could worship, adore, and venerate. Okay. So immaculate conception and perpetual virginity is the dogma of the Roman Catholic Church originated in December 8, in 1884, uh, 1854. December 8, 1854, this dogma originated and it was declared by Pope Pius IX. Pope Pius IX. Okay, he's the one who declared. Now, what it is uh, in his papal bull, uh, infallibilis Dios, which means you know when they sit in the ex cathedra on the throne of the peer Saint Peter, in Saint Petersburg, uh, I mean in uh, in that uh, throne of the Pope, when they sit there and they say anything that is infallibility, that's from God. That's what they believe. Okay, we're going to see what the Bible says in regard to perpetual virginity and immaculate conceptions. Few of the verses we have studied before earlier in other stu studies such as Mary's apparitions and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, other subjects. Okay, and we will be taking few of the verses from that study. And so we will, uh, we will study on this subject. Perpetual virginity and immaculate conception. Now, what is Immaculate Conception? Immaculate Conception means the doctrine that the Virgin Mary was conceived free from all stain of original sin. Which means she had no sin in her. Okay? She was sinless. She was sinlessly perfect when she was born. She was conceived sinlessly from her mother. Which means her mother was sinless. And then, her, if her mother was conceived sinless, then her grandmother ought to be sinless. But the truth of this matter is, what the Bible says is totally opposite to what the church teaches. And the, and the church, and the, and the Bible teaches us, uh, in the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 12, in the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 12, the Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and, by, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Who have sinned? 
All have sinned. The Bible has concluded that all have sinned. And the Bible has concluded that let God be true and all men be Liar. liars. Okay? So there is no one who is sinless who is born in this world except the Lord Jesus Christ because He is God. Amen? Amen. And there is no other who was born in this world was born without sin. If, if, if Mary was born without sin, then her mother was born without sin, then her grandmother was born without sin, then her great-grandmother was born, and so and so. And then that means Adam never sinned. Now that is not what the Bible says. What, Adam, what the Bible says about Adam? The Bible says that Adam, Adam transgressed against God. Amen? Amen? And because of one man's sin, what happened? Sin entered into the whole world. Whole world. It's because of Adam. Adam transgressed against God. Adam sinned against God. And so all human beings became sinners. You don't become a sinner because you commit sin. But you commit sin because you are a sinner. Amen? Amen. And so that ought to be... Uh, known very well, okay. So all have sin, and all have all uh, was everybody was born in sin. Everybody uh, conceived in sin. Everybody gave birth in sin, except the Lord Jesus Christ, who knew no sin but became sin for us. Amen. But he, he was uh, he was perfect, holy. He never committed sin. He was born without sin. But that is not the case of Mary. Immaculate conception means Mary was conceived free from all the stain of original sin by her mother. Okay? And so that what they want to say, see, if she was immaculate, she was conceived, um, you know, without any sin, that means she was holy, perfectly sinless. And so if she is perfect, sinlessly perfect, which means she comes to the state of God. Okay, so they want to bring her to that level and that's why they brought up this, okay, to exalt Mary as mother of God or equal to God, worthy of worship, adoration and veneration. So they make a mother of God, which means Mary's mother should be who? The grandmother of God. <laughs> okay, as if God needs mother and grandmother and great grandmother. Now that is the joke of the Roman Catholic teaching. Okay, that's the joke. They are playing with fire and it's burning them, but they are not repenting. Okay, let's see Mary's sin nature. Mary's sin nature. Now, what does the Bible say about immaculate conception? We will soon go to perpetual virginity. Perpetual virginity means she was always virgin. She never lost her virginity and she died as a virgin. Now, does the Bible say so? Does the Bible teach us that? Let's see what the Bible says. Now, as we are focusing in Immaculate Conception, let's, as you are there in Romans chapter 5 verse 12, let's all read it together. If you are there in Romans chapter 5 verse 12, we will all read it together from book of Romans chapter 5 verse number 12. And now here we go. One, two, three. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Amen? Amen. If I would have given you multiple versions, what would have happened? Confusions, right? But because we are reading from one Bible, which is God's book, the King James, there is no confusion. Okay? Very good. So, Bible says, Wherefore, by one man, who is that one man? Adam. Okay? What happened because of Adam? Sin entered where? Into the world. Now, world means what? World is uh, earth or what? What is world speaking about? People. For God so loved the world. Okay. So world is speaking about you and me. All the human race. All the human race. Sin entered into the world. Okay. Sin entered into every human being. Therefore as by one man sin entered into the world. And death by 
sin. And wh why, why death came in human being? Because of sin. If there was no sin, there wouldn't be death. Okay? But because of sin, death came. Now, the, you know, today, uh, August 15, so cel they celebrate what fish today? The Roman Catholics. Assumption. Assumptions of Mary. Okay? So that uh, doctrine came on August 15, 1947 or 1948. In the year 1948. So that's 66 years ago. The Roman Catholic Church decided that we will have a new doctrine now. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? We will introduce a new doctrine, a new dogma. That Mary never died but she was taken up with body in heaven. They, they were all sleeping all these years. In 1948 they got a revelation. So called. Okay, so uh, whatever they decide they want to make and they want everyone to believe. Now that is not what the Bible teaches. Okay, the Bible never tells us that Mary was taken up uh, bodily into heaven. Never. If that was so important, the Holy Ghost would have written in the Bible. We read about how many people taking are taken up into, the, uh, into heaven. Huh? Only two? How many people? Who are they? Elijah? Elijah. Huh? Moses. Enoch? Moses. Then? Christ. Jesus Christ? Moses. Huh? Forgot about Paul? I know a man, whether by body or in spirit, he is caught up where? The third heavens. And then, the book of Revelation, who? John. John. Almost five people. Okay? And so, whenever they were taken in spirit or in bodily, we read in the Bible, Enoch was taken bodily, Elijah was taken bodily, Jesus Christ was taken bodily, and so we see, it's written in the Bible, nothing about Mary, because God did not want it to know anything about it, and so we, we understand, as if God was not serious about it, she died and she was buried, and she will be resurrected at the day of judgment. Amen? Amen. Or maybe, maybe when Jesus, you know, when Jesus was crucified, and then we find that, there was a great earthquake and every grave opened. They went into Jerusalem. Huh? Maybe she also was resurrected. She also came out of the grave and then she went to heaven after death, after uh, dying. Okay? And so, the, God, never, uh, God never thought it a very serious thing to uh, tell her what happened to her. But she died and sh now she is in heaven. Okay? She is in heaven and she was a very godly woman. But she never expected anyone to worship her. Okay, but people are doing it. And very soon the Lord, uh, 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 you know, very soon we will be having a gospel track that's known as Why Mary is Crying. It's, it's under printing in, in Mumbai now. And the Chick publication has given us about 10,000 uh, Chick tracks. And so God has been very good. So that speaks about a lot of uh, Catholic doctrine in it. And so what we find here, we see that all have sinned, okay? Every human being, every man, every woman, every child that is born is conceived in sin, is living in sin, okay? And so we find in the Bible that sin entered into the world and by death, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned, amen? Amen. Now let's come to Luke chapter 2. We'll see the sin nature of Mary. Sin nature of Mary. They say, oh Mary never committed sin. Let's see what Mary did in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. In verse number 48. You know what happened in Luke chapter 2? What happened in Luke chapter 2? They went to Jerusalem. For the feast of the temple. And they were returning back. And Jesus, what, what happened to Jesus? He was not there with them. Where, where was he? Huh? He was in the, he was in the temple. temple. Doing what? Teaching, reasoning, doing your father's business. That's good, okay? Doing his father's business. And so, you know, today say, oh, you know, people say, we can pray to her and she's everywhere, man. She did not even know where her son was. <laughs> you see that? 
to everybody, you know, millions of Roman Catholics says in her different, different, uh, different parts of the world, they are praying rosary and praying to her, thinking that she is omnipresent, which means she is everywhere present and she can hear all the prayers. You see that? But the truth of the matter is, when she was coming back with Joseph from the temple, from the feast, she didn't even know where Jesus was. Amen? Amen. Hey, when she could not know where her son was, what do you think? She will be everywhere in all part of the world knowing everything. She knows nothing. Amen? Amen? She was an ordinary woman like anyone in this world. And she was obedient to the will of God. And she got saved and she is in heaven. Amen? Amen. But she is not omnipresent or omnipotent. Okay? And so in Luke chapter uh, 2... We read about this story, and then he, and what Mary did, we'll see. There's something surprising. It's not surprising, it's true. The, let's see what the Holy Spirit says. But first we will read what Mary says in verse number 48. And when they... Okay, in verse number 47, All that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Now the people there, lawyers and doctors and teachers, are really surprised and astonished. By the teaching of Jesus Christ. Verse number 48. Immediately these people reached over there. And when they saw him. Who saw him? Mary and Joseph. And when they saw him. They were amazed. And his mother said unto him. Whose mother? Jesus' mother. Okay. And his mother said unto him. Son. Why hast thou... Thus dealt with us. Behold. What? What? Is she telling the truth to Jesus? No. She is afraid what the society will say. She is afraid what the society will say. She is saying. Oh how will, what will people think. You know, if I say that this fellow has no father. They are going to say illegitimate son. He is an illegitimate son. And so let me cover up everything. So she is telling a lie. She is telling a lie. Because Jesus, um, Joseph is not the father of Jesus. He is not at all. He has nothing to do. The Bible is very clear. He knew her not until she brought forth the firstborn son. That's what the Bible says. Okay. Wist he not that I must be. Uh, then he says. Well, Why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold. Thy father and I have sought this sorrowing. She tells a lie. You know why? Because she has a sin nature in her. She says a lie. She tells a lie. Thy father. No. And see what immediately Jesus corrects her in verse number 49. And he said unto them. How is it that ye sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my... <laughs> Jesus corrects her immediately. Don't you know that I am supposed to be in my father's business? He is not my father. God is my father. Amen? Amen. Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? Now this is another verse where the Holy Spirit is very nicely... Oh, has put it over. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's that's fine. Okay. Okay, in verse number 43. See how the Holy Spirit puts it. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus carried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. You see how the Holy Spirit, Spirit says? Joseph and his mother. But what Mary says? Thy father. <laughs> and then what Jesus says? My father. Holy Spirit clearly mentions over here. Uh, uh, Joseph and his mother. Which means Joseph has nothing to do in the birth of Jesus Christ. Mary tells the lion. Say hey. Thy father and I were searching you sorrowing. Jesus corrects her and saying. Wish ye not that I must be in my father's business. Not in Joseph's business. 
but heavenly father. Amen? Amen. That's why did she tell a lie? Because of sin, sin nature. Amen? Amen. She was sinful. There's no immaculate conception and perpetual virginity or sinlessness of Mary. No. That's the lie of the devil from the pit of hell. See in Mark chapter 3 verse 33. She also was like some of you Christians. <laughs> Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. But you guys are good. I'm talking about the others. Who don't make it. <laughs> Mark chapter 3. In gospel of Mark chapter 3. She is also like some of the Christians now. She don't like to go for prayer meetings. But she, when she gets trouble and problems, she wants to run to Jesus. Right? And so in Mark chapter 3, verse number 33. Let's see in verse number 31. There came then his brethren and his mother. And standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And a multitude said about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And what happened? There is a prayer meeting going on. Jesus is teaching and preaching to the people gathered there in a room. But who are not there? The mother of Jesus, that's Mary, and his brothers and sisters are not even serious about this. They are not concerned about it. They don't want to even come to the prayer meeting. They are where? Outside. They are in the house. They don't want to follow the teachings of Jesus. They don't want to be in the part of the ministry. They are busy. They, you know, we read later on, one of the brother of Jesus making fun of Jesus Christ. Saying, hey, come on, go. You go to Jerusalem and show some miracles. At least. So making fun, mocking at him. Okay, and then we find what we find here for yours. She was not in the meeting over for during the prayer meeting, and and now they have some problem that arise, and now immediately they want to come to Jesus. And the multitude said about him, verse number thirty-two, and said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee, and they say, Hey, Jesus. Your mother and your brothers are outside the room. They want to seek, uh, sir, they want to talk to you. They have come to see you. And what Jesus says. And he answered them saying, Who is my mother? Or my brethren? And he looked around, and he looked round about on them, which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, those who are following the teachings and the ministry of Jesus Christ are his mother, brother and sister. <coughs> you see, here even Jesus is rejecting Mary. Mary has seen nature. She doesn't want to come for prayer meeting because, I don't know. But when she has trouble, she comes to Jesus Christ. Just like any ordinary human being or any Christian. Like Rachel, no. She comes always, right? Okay? And so what we find? We find that's because of the sin nature. So there she lied. Here she is not following his ministry. His brothers are not following ministry. Now, if Mary was sinlessly perfect, then the, and then what we find, then the other generations of Mary should be also sinlessly perfect, right? But that's not the truth. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, this is something what we have learned previously. Uh, now, what Mary does because of her sin, she so shows that she is a sinful. She never claimed to be sinlessly perfect. It's the church that made it, the Roman church. And what does Mary uh, does about her sin? Turn to Gospel of Luke chapter 2. Luke, uh, Luke chapter 2 verse 22. Gospel of Luke chapter 22. We will see... You know, what happened? Jesus was born and now he is how many days old? 
See in verse number uh, 21. And when the eight days were accomplished. How many days? Eight, eight days. Okay. <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> the Roman Catholic Church teaches, you know, that when the wise men came, where did they come? They, come, they came to the manger. Right? Isn't that true? That's what they teach. When the wise men came, they came to the manger when Jesus was in the cradle. No, 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 no. Jesus is already brought out of the manger. He's gone to the temple with his parents. After eight days, they are no more in the manger. They're gone back to the house. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, when the wise men came, they, they worshipped the child, not the infant. So he's almost three years old when the wise men came and found him. And they didn't come to the manger. They came to his house, the Bible says. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. And so in, in Luke chapter 2, verse 21, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of, chi, of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of whose purification... Her purification. Why she needs purification? She's a sinner. If she was perpetual conception, then that ought not to be. Uh, there is no need of you know sin offering for purification and all the offerings of purification. Okay, and when the days of a purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. <clears throat> as it is written in the Lord, uh, what is it? Verse number 24, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was, okay, and so what she did here? She has brought what? She has brought the offering for what? Her purification. If she was sinless, then she did. Uh, there's no need for her to bring offering for her purification. She is. She has conceived. Uh, no, she she is a sinner, and for herself, for her purification, she has to do it according to the law. We read that in Leviticus chapter twelve. Okay, um, that's the law. What the Bible says uh, in Leviticus chapter twelve, verse two, six, and eight. Tells us the same thing. And she was obedient to that law. Okay. I will read for you. Speak unto the children of Israel. Leviticus chapter 12 verse 2. Saying. If a woman have conceived seed. And born a man, ch man child. Then she shall be unclean. How many days? Seven days. According to the days of the separation. Of her infirmity. Okay. Sh and she shall be unclean. Uh, verse number 6, And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for what offering? Sin offering. Okay? She brings for her sin offering unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest. Leviticus chapter 12 verse 8 says, And if she be not able to bring a lamb... Then she shall bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her and she shall be clean. Amen. Now that's what she did. She brought for her sin offering, for her purification. Okay, because she had a sin, because she was a sinner. Well, now let us move and see that Mary was a born-again Christian. 
Okay, she did according to what the word of God said. She knew that she was a sinner. She took her sin offering. She offered it for her purification. And then she came, she even accepted Jesus as what? Her Savior. If she was not a sinner, she does not, she need not accept Jesus as her Savior. Luke chapter 2. Okay. Luke chapter, sorry, Luke chapter 1. Verse 47, you know what happened over here? Luke chapter 1, verse 40, uh, let's read verse 46. And Mary said, now you hear what happened? Mary and Elizabeth have met. Now both are pregnant, right? Both have conceived. One has conceived whom? John the Baptist. Elizabeth has conceived John the Baptist. Mary has conceived whom? Jesus and in verse 43 and whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me okay and uh, for lo as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears the baby leapt in my womb for joy who leapt in the womb for joy which baby John the Baptist he okay John the Baptist, he was alive, right in the womb. Verse number 44. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy, and blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Verse number 46. Your Mary's confession and song and prayer. And Mary said... My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Savior. Amen? She has trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior. She is a born again Christian. She is in heaven today, but she is very much grieved by what? Millions of Roman Catholics have been doing to her even after death. She is grieved. It is yours and my responsibility to take this truth, to tell every people who are in ignorance. So what we find here, Mary is a born-again Christian. She trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior. Now, there's something that we must understand when it comes to perpetual virginity. Now, immaculate conception, we have seen that, you know, she was sinful. She had a sin nature. She even lied. And she offered an offering for her uh, purification, for her sin, for her uh, infirmity. Okay, now that's the wrong doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church of immaculate conception. There's no immaculate. In fact, Jesus was immaculately conceived. Jesus was a sin, sinless, perfect God man, God in flesh. Amen? Amen? Jesus is immaculate, not Mary. Okay? And so what we find here is, we talk about, now let's talk about perpetual version. What is perpetual version means? She was always virgin, never lost her virginity. Which means she had no children after Jesus Christ. That's what they want to say. Okay? They want to say, Jesus, Mary never had children after Jesus Christ was born. Why? Because they want to prove that she is sinless. But the Bible tells us to be, a, be aware and to reject every rudiments and the traditions of men. The traditions of men. The philosophies of the world. The Bible tells us to reject that, to be aware of it. Okay? And so these are all the traditions of the churches, the traditions of the man, which are evil and false. Turn your Bible to the Gospel of Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, in verse number 7, there's something the, the Bible tells us. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling. What she brought forth? Why it is said firstborn son? If she had more children, if she had no children, then it should be only son, right? What does the Bible say? Firstborn son. Why? Because he did not have children before Jesus. 
but after Jesus, she had second born, third born, fourth born, fifth born, right? And daughters. And so the Bible is very clear, she brought forth her first born son. If she had no more son later, then the Bible would have been said, the Bible would have said, her only son. Amen? Amen? And so the Holy Ghost is very clear in teaching us the truth. And when the days... Okay, yo. Um, Luke chapter 1, verse num, uh, Luke chapter 2, verse number 7, says, And she brought forth her firstborn son. Very clear. It's not Joseph. Her. Okay? And wrapped him in a swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Because there was no room for them in the inn. She brought forth her firstborn son. Jesus was the firstborn son. Later, Mary had many sons and daughters. That word firstborn is very important. Because that tells us she had the secondborn, thirdborn, fourthborn and fifthborn. Amen? Amen. Now, Mary was virgin until Jesus was born. Even after Jesus was born, Mary was virgin. But after Jesus was born, Mary lived a normal family life with Joseph and she had children. Let's see what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 13. Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 13, verse number 55. And let's read in verse number 54. And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in the, in, in the synagogue, in so much that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Verse number 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Who is the carpenter? Joseph. Joseph. So this, this Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. and this, Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren. What are their names? James. And Joseph. And Simon. And Judas. The names of the brothers of Jesus. This is not speaking about Simon Peter. And this is not speaking about Judas Iscariot. These are the brothers of Jesus Christ. Amen. These are the half brothers of Jesus Christ. Who were born to Joseph and Mary. So Mary lived a normal married life with Joseph. And had sons and daughters. Okay, is not this the mere carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? You see, Jesus had sisters. Are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? Mary was virgin until Jesus was born. And later, Mary lived a normal married life with Joseph. And lost her virginity. And had second born, third born, fourth born, fifth born son and daughters. Amen? Amen. Mary was never perpetually virgin. Okay? She was never perpetually virgin. And they will reject this verse. You know what? And you'll say, no, 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 no. That children were belonging to Joseph, not to Mary. The Bible never says that. The Bible says, his brethren. See what the Bible says. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? Amen? Amen. Mary was virgin until Jesus was born. Even when Jesus was born, she was virgin because Joseph never touched her. Amen? Amen. But after that, after the birth of Jesus, Mary 
lived a normal married life with Joseph and had all these sons and daughters. So they were half brothers of Jesus and, uh, and sisters of Jesus. Okay, and so Mary was not perpetually virgin. Let us see that in, in, in that verse itself, Mary's son's names are given. Mary's son's names are given in Matthew chapter uh, 13 verse 55. What we find? Well, Ma come to Matthew on the same point. Come to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Mary was virgin until Jesus was born. Matthew chapter 1 and see in verse number 25. Verse number 25. Verse number 24. Uh, then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. Verse number 25. And knew her not till she had brought forth a firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. And knew her not. Till. You got that word? Knew her not. Till she had brought forth her firstborn son. After she brought forth her firstborn son. He knew her. And they had third, second born, third born, fourth born and fifth born. Sons and daughters. Amen. So Mary was not perpetually virgin. Then what we found in Matthew chapter 13 verse 55. Mary's son's names are given. Joseph and Mary's son's names are given. And the name is? James, Joseph, Simon and Judas. Okay. So the sons, four sons they had. And they had daughters. And Mary also had daughters. Come to John chapter 19. John chapter 19. We read that in Matthew chapter 13. Let's see, also see in John chapter 19. Verse number 25. Verse number 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sisters. Mary the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. So it's speaking about, well, his mother's sisters speaks about his mother's sisters. So they are aunties, right? Okay, so in Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, what did we read? We read, Jesus had what? Brothers and sisters. Okay, Jesus had, okay, this verse uh, speaks about his mother's sisters. Right, not about his sisters. But Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, uh, speaks about uh, sisters. And also, uh, we read in Mark chapter 3, verse 33 onwards, his mother, brother and sisters, they were standing out and wanted to meet Jesus Christ. So Jesus said, Mary had sons and daughters after Jesus was born. That's very clear. Matthew chapter 13 verse 55. Don't forget that verse. Okay. Okay. Now, come to Matthew chapter 13. There itself, verse 55, Mary had five sons. Is that? Joseph, Joseph, okay. Mary had four sons and daughters. Okay? Mark, Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, Is not this carpenter's son, is not his mother Mary, call, is not his mother called Mary, and his brethren, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, how many brothers? Four. Okay. Mark chapter 3 verse 31. There came then his. Mark chapter 3 verse 31. 
uh, his brethren, okay, not speaking about the apostles or disciples, speaking about his brethren, Jesus' brothers, okay, those who were born to Mary and Joseph. Then came then his brethren and his mother, okay, and standing without sent unto him, calling him. Then John chapter 2 verse 12. John chapter 2 verse 12. After this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples. And they continued there not many days. So it's very clear. His disciples are not called his brethren in this word. Disciples are made separately and his brothers are made separately. Okay? And so it says his mother... His brethren and his disciples. Amen. So his mother is there. His four brothers are there. And his disciples are there in Capernaum. So Mary and Joseph had sons and daughters. And so that, uh, that uh, proves that the, 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 the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church of Mary being perpetually virgin is false. And it's a, it's a doctrine of, from the pit of hell. And it's misleading and it's not true at all. It's, a, it's the tradition of men which the Bible tells us to reject and to expose it. So, what we have seen that we are, when we talked about immaculate conception, we have seen that she was not conceived without sin. Why? Because according to Romans chapter 5 verse 12, all have seen. Amen. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. All have seen. And we can give so many verses where the Bible speaks about. Okay. Uh, the sinful. When, uh, how man is sin, born in sin. Okay. Because of one man's sin. Sin entered into the world. Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have seen all have and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 10. There is nine righteous, no, not one. Okay, very clear. There's no immaculate conception. We also saw that Mary lied, right? She said, Thy father, when the Holy Ghost says, Joseph and his mother. And immediately Jesus corrects Mary and says, Wish ye not that I should be in my father's business? She sinned. And she was also like many of you people because she does not go to attend. Prayer meeting regularly. And so what we find? We saw that she was outside with her sons and her daughters. And when she had trouble, she came to Jesus and wanted to meet him. Okay? So what we see is immaculate conception is a hoax. It's a doctrine from the pit of hell. It's a Satan's doctrine which is not taught in the Bible. Amen? Anyway, Satan doctrines are not taught in the Bible. Amen? Amen? Satan doctrines are taught in Revelation chapter 17 church. That's the church of Hollard. That's the Roman Catholic church. And, and, that's, and then we... And that's every cultic doctrines. And then we see the perpetual version. Oh, so it sounds nice, right? Perpetual version. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says uh, that uh, Joseph knew her not... What is the next word? Till. The till is very important. Till she brought forth her firstborn son. Very important. Till and firstborn. Which means after she brought forth her firstborn son, she lived a normal married life with Joseph. And she had how many sons? Four sons. And the name was? Jules. James. Simon and Judas. Judas. And did, she, did he have sisters? Yes. yes. Who gave birth to them? Mary. Mary gave birth. And who are their father? Joseph. Joseph. There's no immaculate conception. There is no perpetual virginity. She lost her virginity after Jesus was born. When Joseph lived a married life, it took her as a wife and they had children. Okay? So there is no perpetual virginity. There is no immaculate conception. And that means Mary was not sinlessly perfect. She is not... She cannot be exalted to the state of God. She should not be worshipped. She should not be venerated. She should not be adored. She is under the feet of Christ, worshipping there in heaven. 
Amen? She is born again. She is a wonderful lady, obeying the will of God. But there is only one who is holy, holy, holy. Amen? Amen. Only Jesus Christ had no sin because He is God. Amen? In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For He had made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made righteousness of God in Him. Amen? Amen. Who knew no sin? Jesus. Jesus knew no sin. Okay? Jesus knew no sin. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Only Jesus Christ had no sin in Him, because He was, and He is, and He will be God. Amen? Amen. 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 That's why He had no sin. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, teaches us how can we be saved. Or how can people who are not saved can be saved? How can they be justified? Knowing, Galatians chapter 2 verse 16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. By works, by law, no flesh be justified. Only by faith. Amen? Only by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Only by believing in Jesus Christ by faith people can get saved. What they need to believe? They need to believe that Jesus Christ is the true living God. That He shed His blood on the cross for the sins of the whole world, died on the cross, was buried, and rose again on the third day. Amen? When they genuinely believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and the work that He did for them on the cross, and come to Jesus Christ by faith, and put their faith in Jesus Christ and believing Him, they shall be saved and justified. Amen? Amen. That is the only way how every flesh can be justified. Not by works, not by law. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen? Amen. Not by works. Not by works. It is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Anyone listening to me via internet, and if you are Roman Catholic, this is my prayer and hope that you would repent of your idolatry and your faith in your self-righteousness. I pray that thou will, you will repent and come to Jesus Christ by faith and come out of that church of war, that church of harlot, which is leading you to hell. Come to Jesus Christ by faith and He will justify you. Amen? Amen. Come to Jesus Christ by faith and He will save you. And so... The Bible clearly teaches that perpetual virginity is a false doctrine. Immaculate conception is a false doctrine. The only truth is the Bible. And the Bible says, let God be true and all men be liar. liar. And if anybody does not agree with this Bible and the teaching of the Bible, it is because there is no light no in them. The Bible says, yeah, and what is it? If they speak, speak not according... To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay? We don't need what the church teaches. We don't need what the pastor teaches. We don't need what a pope teaches. We need what the scripture says. Amen? Amen. What say the scripture? The scripture says all men are sinners and are going to die and go to hell. But by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, they, are, they shall be justified. Amen? Amen? Immaculate conception is an hoax. It's a doctrine from the pit of hell. Perpetual virginity is the doctrine from the pit of hell. Amen? Amen. Believe the Bible.